I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Twas the day after Christmas, and many of you found yourself back in area stores to either exchange a present, use a new gift card, or maybe take advantage of the after Christmas sales out there. Consumer Reports tells us there are good deals to be had now on clothing and toys in many area stores. And these post-Christmas shopping days are important ones for retailers who are hoping for a boost at the cash register after some disappointing revenue numbers leading up to Christmas. Shopper Track, which logs retail shopping trends, reported a significant decline in merchandise sales during the week ending December 22nd compared to the same week last year. Now look for a full report here at Record Online in the tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. Plenty of folks are feeling the holiday spirit in Bloomingburg, where a group of area residents gathered outside Village Hall Tuesday morning to protest the decision of the Village Board to hold a, quote, emergency meeting Monday morning with the only public notice coming an hour earlier in an email format to the Times-Herald Record. The board hasn't held a meeting since August, and those who stood outside Village Hall Tuesday say they were there as part of a continuing call for action. I'm here to try to preserve um, what's, what's left of our community. Um, I have my granddaughter sleeping in the car, try to save some of this territory for her. A lot of it is gone. But we still have the mountains, we still have the rivers, and we still have some farms left. And I'm here to try to protect that from future greed and corruption of our elected officials. Many of those in the Bloomingburg area are up in arms over an apparently Hasidic housing development now under construction. Opponents have filed legal papers calling for Mayor Mark Berenson's removal from office. They claim he violated municipal law and the approval of deals with the developers, charges that Berenson has uh, strongly denied. Last January, a Kingston resident placed an ad on Craigslist advertising his 1999 Lincoln Navigator as being for sale. 29-year-old Jermaine Williams of the Bronx bought the vehicle. Trouble was, police say Williams purchased the Navigator with a false identity and paid with a check drawn from a false bank account. Now, Kingston police have caught up with Williams and have charged him with felony forgery after he was apprehended in New York City while driving the stolen vehicle. Two men died back on December 2nd when a retaining wall at a construction site in Maybrook collapsed. Now comes word the widow of one of the victims has filed a $40 million notice of claim, the first step towards a possible lawsuit directed against New York City and the city's Department of Environmental Protection. The claim was filed on behalf of Doreen Winkler, whose husband Scott died days after the collapse. He was part of the crew working on a mock-up of an aqueduct project for the city DEP. Another worker, Timothy Lang of Saugerties, died at the scene. OSHA is in the midst of an investigation to determine whether any workplace standards were violated. Outgoing Orange County Executive Ed Diana is not ruling out a return to politics. Diana will leave office at the end of the year after 12 years as county executive, the last few turbulent ones. Diana chose not to seek re-election this year for health reasons. He underwent a successful liver transplant several weeks ago. Asked by Times-Herald Record reporter Chris McKenna if he would consider a run for a state senate seat, Diana said anything's possible. His successor, fellow Republican Steve Newhouse, takes the oath of office on New Year's Day. And be prepared to dig a little deeper into the wallet for the money you'll need to buy first-class stamps. Approval was given this week to allow a temporary three-cent price hike, bringing the cost to 49 cents a letter. It's a move to help the Postal Service recoup some of its financial losses that came with the decline in mailings brought on by the 2008 economic downturn. The postal rate surcharge is not supposed to last for more than two years. Many of uh, you won't uh, feel the price increase immediately. That's because forever stamps, good for first-class postage, uh, whatever the future rate, can be purchased at the lower price until the new rate kicks in January 26th. Sunshine should dominate our weather as we head into the last weekend of 2013. Friday will be mostly sunny with temperatures in the upper 30s. Saturday will be sunny and milder with the highs up around 45 degrees. Get the news and information to help start your day in the Times-Herald Record. And keep clicking here at Record Online for news when it breaks. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.
Thank you.